Greetings adventurers and welcome to ADV in Japan. So today I'll be presenting to you my highly requested Fuel X Lite and DNA Airbox lid filter review. Now this has been a highly requested review after I had mentioned that in my last video I had experienced some overheating issues after having installed these two items. Several of you wanted to know whether or not the overheating is related to the Fuel X Lite, the DNA filter, both, or some other separate issue. Well, after recording three outings under several different conditions and having consulted several people, I finally isolated the overheating issue. So having solved the issues has allowed me to finally give you all my impressions of the Fuel X Lite and the DNA lid filter. So if you're thinking of installing either or both of these items, or you just want to find out what the heck was causing my bike to overheat, well, then stick around as we're going to get into it. So the problem started when I took the bike out a few weeks ago, which was supposed to be the review video you're watching now. The problem is my bike overheat before I could finish it. Obviously concerned for the bike, I immediately cut filming and carefully drove home. Given I had started experiencing overheating issues only after I had installed the Fuel X Lite and DNA filter, I figured the issue was probably due to one of the two. Based on the fact that the aftermarket DNA lid filter produces a lean mixture due to the increased airflow, I assume this is probably the culprit, as a lean running engine tends to run hotter as there is less fuel to provide cooling to the engine. So I went out on a second time with the stock airbox lid installed to see if I could recreate the overheating issues. Oh, hey! Overheating! Look at that, you guys! Well then! Unfortunately, with the stock lid installed, the bike eventually suffered overheating issues as well, pointing to either the Fuel X Lite or some other issue with the cooling system. With this in mind, I headed back home to do some more tinkering and sleuthing. Starting with the Fuel X Lite, I recorded the unit in operation and sent the video to Protronics for review, to which they replied that the lights on the unit suggested it was operating normally. So, being at a complete loss as to what the problem could be, I turned to the lovely folks over at the KTM 390 Adventure Forum on Facebook. There I was given several suggestions as to what could be causing the problem, one of which caught my eye almost immediately, and it came from none other than the YouTuber Sean Filner from Fastidious Restamones. He suggested the most obvious, a clogged radiator due to an aftermarket rad guard and a high fender. Now it was 9pm at night, but after I had read this I immediately went outside grabbed a flashlight and investigated, and sure enough, the radiator guard was caked in mud. The following day, after removing the radiator guard, I discovered that mud and debris had built up on the radiator on both sides of the fender between the radiator guard and the radiator itself. Upon further inspection and reflection, it became evident that the poor design of the radiator guard not only most likely restricted airflow, but also contributed to the accumulation of debris between the guard and the radiator. So I cleaned everything out thoroughly, reattached the stock guard, reinstalled the DNA filter, and embarked on a third and final ride to see if I could reproduce the overheating problem. Thankfully, it appears Sean was right, although only partially. After riding for approximately 4 hours in 32 degrees Celsius weather, neither did the bike overheat nor did any debris get stuck in the radiator. So it seems that the buildup of debris was a gradual process that took several outings to push the bike to its limits. This combined with a generally leaner running engine hindered the bike's ability to cool the engine and resulted in overheating. 
So while the high fender is certainly allowing debris to come into contact with the rad guard, a proper cleaning after every ride should prevent any major restrictions in airflow here. Yet another indication that it is probably not the high fender's fault is the fact that I received a photo from another Facebook user showing that with the stock fender on, you still get mud caking onto the radiator with an aftermarket radiator guard. So this seems to be a radiator guard issue more so than a fender issue. So I think it's pretty obvious here, but I do not recommend this particular uh, Zetomer AliExpress rad guard as it causes some serious overheating issues. Uh, and if you are running an aftermarket rad guard, and particularly if you are also running a high fender, I would be very, very diligent in cleaning out the rad guard, the radiator itself, and the fender after every single ride to prevent any potential overheating issues. So with that folks, I can now bring you my review of the Fuel X Lite and DNA Lid air filter. When used together, these two products greatly enhance the low end performance of the KTM 390, improving both torque and smoothness of operation. The power gain from the DNA Lid filter is night and day compared to the stock intake. As you can see in the above video, I can easily lift the front wheel both while sitting and standing with no need to use the clutch, only throttle input. The upgrade also bumps up the RPM range in the lower gears, which can help prevent a lot of the stalling issues people complain about on this bike. However, there are a few downsides to consider with this upgrade. As mentioned in my previous videos, any aftermarket airbox lid filter will bypass the main intake filter, meaning that you may not be getting the highest quality air into the engine. So if you live in a dusty area, I cannot recommend this upgrade. I would recommend an aftermarket filter inside the airbox with a pre-filter on the snorkel instead. If you're interested, check out the video link above for more information about this upgrade. Another downside is the engine honk. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the sound, but riding at 7,000 RPMs for an hour in the highway with that kind of noise and that vibration is not exactly comfortable. So if you primarily ride long distances, this upgrade might not be the best idea. The final downside to the airbox lid filter upgrade is the side effect of uh, increased power, which makes the already jittery engine even more so jittery in lower gears. So this is where actually the Fuel X Lite comes in handy. The Fuel X Lite complements the DNA filter by smoothing out the rev profile in the lower gears, significantly reducing this jitteriness. By smoothness, I don't mean a severe reduction in, th in throttle response, Rather, I feel like it interprets the throttle input more accurately and precisely, smoothing out small adjustments while allowing for maximum power gain when you need to unleash it. The only criticism I could have of the Fuel X Lite, and it really is not a justified criticism, especially if you only go off-road, is that the Fuel X Lite really only affects the lower RPM range. For higher RPMs, you're going to have to actually probably upgrade the ECU or go in and get the bike tuned. But if you do mainly off-road, like I said, that upper RPM range is not super important. Overall, I am extremely satisfied with this combination of the Fuel X Lite and DNA airbox lid filter. They totally complement each other, resulting in a much more aggressive off-road machine with a touch of finesse. And I'm even more happy that the issue was not the airbox lid filter, because really without the airbox lid filter, the Fuel X Lite is really just kind of a fuel management system. But putting that DNA filter on there really just is such a really nice compliment to the low end power on the bike. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video guys and found it informative. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps make my content more accessible to those seeking this kind of assistance. Until next time, this is ADB in Japan, out.